The following is a production of the Penn Sports Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Crimson Conversion here on the Penn Sports Network. I'm your host for the episode, Jake Slavonic, alongside the flow that glows, Stephen Langdon Jr. and the Beard of Broadcasting, Jeff Hart. And we are, we are here to talk IUP football and IUP men and women's basketball, a preview into their season. Guys, let's start off first with IUP football, and nothing beats the game they had last week or this past week at home against Slippery or Seton Hill, excuse me, 56 to 14 at the Mill. Lenny Williams had a game. We even had a lot of bench players have huge games. It was just a great game overall. What are your guys' thoughts on it? Well, as far as the game goes, it was just complete and utter dominance on IUP's part. I think Seton Hill looked very. Uh, very not very not very well coached they looked yeah they looked yeah. undisciplined because there were a lot of penalty calls that were unnecessary they were jumping we had them jumping on defense the entire game and when you have stupid penalties and turnovers like that you're not going to win yeah lenny williams huge game eight of 13 151 passing yards and three touchdowns including two that went to jojo gauze a great breakout performance he got injured throughout the middle part of the season but came back two weeks ago and just a solid game. But Javon Davis, absolutely the star of the game, I think, in my mind. The true freshman quarterback, he went four for eight with 70 yards and his first career touchdown. Just a fantastic game. Expected to take the reins off of Lenny Williams as Lenny Williams is a senior. And just great to see a true freshman like him get out and have a huge game. Absolutely. Someone definitely, a, definitely appropriate to have Lenny Williams, you know, take them under their wing is Javon Davis. Great game. He looks to be the next Lenny Williams, maybe in breaking some of his records. But let's also focus on the running game. Justice Evans, the player of the game, chosen by Steven and I on our broadcast. And the fourth string running back, Tyler Belega, having a huge game versing his former school, Seton Hill. And another factor on that, his brother, Troy, actually a linebacker for Seton Hill. And let me just tell you, he... He made Seton Hill look worthless. <laughs> that's, that's an understatement, really, because Tyler came out here, had 101 yards, actually over double the amount of yards he's had all season. I think he entered a game with about 81 for the season to have 101 yards against your former team. And he just came out in the second half, and he was just pounding it up the middle, knocking over linebackers, all that pizzazz, you know. And to face a team, face his former team, and to play against his brother, just a huge game, and I think a huge confidence builder for him. Well, this is the second week in a row now. We've had two 100-yard rushers. Um, last week we addressed how that is the key to their game to get Lenny Williams or Javon Davis. Now a great, bright future for him is going on. Um, if we can keep that rushing game going, I think the future is really bright for IUP. I think we can make that really necessary playoff push to get us deeper into the year. Exactly. And Justice Evans, we've mentioned earlier, had a huge game, 137 rushing yards and a few touchdowns to the stat category. He even had a 63-yard rush to start things off for the Crimson Hawks. So coming out of the gate strong, the rushing game, as we, as we all talked about, um, Lenny Williams had a few rushing yards, but he really relied on his passing game in this one. And you mentioned Joe Gauz as he came off the injury. And he started slow coming back, but then coming back to this week, we predicted he'd have a huge week, and boy, did he ever. The one problem with the game that they did have was very early. I think it was about the second play of the game. Dom, McNe Dom McNeil did fumble the ball, but then to stop Seton Hill on defense and to have, of course, the Justice Evans 63-yard run, he just pounded it right up the middle and just took it to the house. It was easy picking for him. Exactly, and let's also not forget about the defensive attack IEP put on Mike Petropola, John McDonald Horner, and Anthony Davis all racking up an interception. Jeff, I'm going to get your take on this. IUP's defense looked unstoppable. Absolutely. I have to second that. IUP, I mean, that was the strongest defense I've seen them play all season, uh, given it was against Seton Hill, who has a very abysmal and poor record. But I think IUP's defense really stepped up this week, and if they can keep up that level of play, we can really make that deep playoff push that's necessary. Yeah, Petropola comes in. He's a senior captain of this team, and he showed that he really wants to finish strong with the Crimson Hawks, picking up a second interception of the season, and a second in, I think, three weeks now. And to have McDonald Horner, who's a young talent, and also Anthony Davis picking up his third interception of the season. Just huge for this IUP defense. And these defensive backs are just looking strong, especially late on in the season. You like to see that week after week. 
Exactly. We mentioned John McDonald Horner. Really quiet coming out of the season, but hey, he put off some big numbers this game. And um, let's predict the future a little bit. They go on the road to face Edinburgh this coming week. They're 6-3, and three, but however, they lost to all three Cal U, Slippery Rock, and Mercyhurst, who let's not forget, we did fall to Cal U and Slippery Rock as well, but we came out on top against the Mercyhurst Lakers 34-33. to That gives IEP a little bit of an upper hand, but it's way too early to count on Edinburgh. They are a strong team, but guys, we got a huge matchup this week between Edinburgh and IEP. Take the floor. I mean, if I had to say it, this is probably their most important game of the season. Embro is sitting at 3-3 three and three in the PSAC. IEP sitting at 4-2. and two. Whoever wins this game has a greater playoff chance. If Embro can knock us off, it kind of eliminates us from the contention. I mean, we're in the top 25 right now still. So if we can knock them off this week, I think we, we got a clear road ahead of us. Especially when we have Shippensburger last week. Hasn't really looked the best this season. Uh, but Edinburgh, definitely the hardest remaining game on their schedule, no doubt. And Edinburgh has looked strong at some points during the season. We saw earlier on they came out of the gates firing at all cylinders, just dominating all teams. And then they went on that little slip, slip up, kind of like how IUP did with Cal U and Slippery Rock. Those two teams are the best. We saw them play last week, and Slippery Rock pretty much beat Cal U fairly easily. But just two, I think the two best teams in PSAC and Slippery Rock and Cal U. But this is a huge game for IEP. If they lose this game, and if they, it, I think that they even win by seven points, I think that that just completely blows up their playoff chances because they need to come out into Edinburgh and just completely dismantle them. I'm saying winning by 21 would be a good number for IEP to win by because it shows the committee that they are a real team and that they are the real deal and that these, those, Cal, that Cal U game, and that Slippery Rock game were just slip-ups. Exactly. You know, they only have two, two games left. doesn't get any easier. But, yeah, they traveled to Edinburgh this week to play. Coverage brought to you by Edinburgh University. Catch IEPathletics.com. Go into football and click watch, and you'll watch their stream. And then Steve and I will call a Shippensburg game once they come back home for the final week of football. With that being said, guys, we're going to move on to IUP basketball, starting with the men's, men's team. And we got some pretty exciting news. Jacobo Diaz named preseason All-American. Guys, that's a huge honor for him. Absolutely. Um, Kobo, coming into his senior year, has a lot, a lot to show. I mean, getting to interview him, I, I think the coaches and the players think nothing of the highest expectations for him. And I think we can expect to see a lot of production, especially from shooting this year. Exactly. And you got a, you got a huge preview from Coach Joe Lombardi when you actually attended the IEP Media Day. Uh, I think it was last week, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And you had a great time. You got a lot of quotes. But you also heard about how Lombardi use, or looks to utilize Kobo and the rest of his team. Steven, you know, they lost, or you guys, both of you actually, Anthony Glover, Aaron Hutton, huge factors from beyond the arc and from inside the paint and on the foul line as well. They're gone, but I don't think IUP has anything to worry about with the team they have now. What they lose in outside shooting, they gain in inside shooting because they have a lot of, a lot of talent that are tall. I, th I think they have about four or five guys that are above 6'8". Six, six, so when you have that size, to be able to drive into the basket and play in the paint, it it looks better for you and you can really dominate teams. If you're able to control that paint, that's probably the most contested area in the game of basketball. So if you can control that area and say, this is ours, then you have a better chance at winning than not. Well, in this season with the three point with the three-point shot, because a, a large portion of last year's offensive production did come from the, the three-point line, from the arc. Um, I asked Coach Lombardi what his mindset was in the focal point of the team. He said they're still going to put him up. They're still going to shoot. Even though they lost Glover, they still have great players like Kobo, and Willem is now healthy now, so they're expecting a lot of production from these guys this season, especially from the three-point line. Exactly, and let's not forget, they also acquired a Duquesne transfer, Marko Kravacevic. He's going to be a huge catalyst to the IUP offensive production. And let's also not forget they have a lot of talent on the bench with Anthony White, Todd Fetzko, the homegrown native. He looks to put some major points on for Indiana. Um, but, yeah, there's really – losing Glover and Hutton really doesn't really hinder IUP as far as talent-wise because, as you mentioned and even you mentioned, they have a lot of areas to fill with the talent they have. And that's another thing, too. You see – even with our football team, we get a lot of D1 transfers. So you have a Duquesne transfer now that 
He's a, he's a tall dude. I think he's around 6'9", 6'10". So if you have another strong force, and especially since coming off of a D1 program, you know that you have to put all your hard work into the season, and you know what it takes to become that dominant player. So I'm very interested to see how he does throughout the period of the season. And I'm very excited altogether to see how this team gels and really how they try and dominate teams. Well, speaking, especially dominate, Getting to speak with the, the coaches and the players, um, I asked them how they feel about being ranked number one in the uh, preseason poll rankings. Most most people would be, you know, thrilled with that. Not Lombardi. He said he wasn't surprised, and most of the players couldn't care less about it. When I asked player uh, Dante, he, it doesn't matter. All that matters is how you produce during this season. They just care about winning. Yeah, that's all it comes down to is what they show on the court. Season begins in a few weeks. Who knows what they'll bring to the table, especially being pre-ranked number one. And I'm really interested to see how Lombardi coaches the team, considering his son Dante is a senior this year. So I really think that the team is going to want to go out with a bang, especially with the talent that they have this year. They have a decent amount of seniors, so if they're going to win, I think this is the year to win it. You said it. All right, guys. Great predictions, great analysis on IEP men's basketball. Let's switch over to the IEP women's team. And Coach McConnell, he's looking to make it second or make it his second straight year to the Final Four with IEP. After last year, they lost to the eventual champion Ashland, which by no means is something to shake your or to hang your head about. Ashland was a tough team, and I'm glad they lost to the champions because that just shows IEP is strong. Um, Especially Ashland, the UConn, the UConn of Division II women's basketball, averaging over 100 points per game. That's no easy feat. You see some NBA teams struggle to get 100 points in a game day after day. So if you have a Division II program that goes out there, scores 100 points day after day, that's just incredible. Exactly. And, you know, we, we talk about all how the men's basketball team has a lot of talent on their bench as well as starting five, but the IEP women's has mega, mega factors. After, despite losing Audrey Stapleton, Hallie Denman, and Megan Smith last year, Megan Smith, don't forget, was a huge catalyst for them. They have a lot of talent coming back in Carolyn Appleby, who put up 23 points again in the exhibition game against Ohio State. And then we also have redshirt senior Lauren Wallacek coming back this season. And then let's also not forget a lot of people on the bench. Guys, I'm, ex I'm expecting great things just from the IP women's basketball team altogether. Absolutely, and getting to talk to Coach McConnell, he, uh, he said they have a great nucleus of players who know how to bring in the new talent that comes in each and every year and get them to really gel together. I think with the loss of Megan Smith, that's obviously hard to replace, but you already addressed it. Lauren, we got to speak with her. She has no problem filling those shoes and trying to fill the role that she played. I think the team is going to gel, and especially the focal point this year is running and beating the other teams on the fast break and running because IUP Women's is really well known for their full court press on other teams. So I think if they can keep that system going, they'll be successful. Yeah, they lose their number one scorer, Megan Smith. Really, the biggest question mark is who's going to replace her? Well, they have, their, they have their person to replace her in Appleby, who's going to be running the point guard. And like you said, dominating Ohio State with 23 points. And that's a ranked team. That's a Division One ranked team that they compete it with in an exhibition match. And didn't look too bad, to say, if I do say so myself. Yeah, they only lost by, what, 15 to them? Yeah, to lose to a Division Fairly impressive. Yeah, yeah. to lose to a, a Division One team as prestige as Ohio State by only that many then that really shows that the talent that you see in this team. But after losing your top scorer, you also have your second, third, and fourth scorers that return in Appleby, of course, Robertson, and Wallacek that you just said. So it's not like they're losing an incredible amount. You have players that can fill that void and hopefully take that team to not only a Final Four appearance, but a national championship. And I definitely see that coming from the IP women's basketball team. I think they have a strong force, both on offense and defense. You mentioned the full court press. We saw that a lot last year, and that really stopped the offensive production for other teams. I expect a lot of great things. But hey, guys, that was great analysis on both football and basketball. Make sure to subscribe to The Pen if you haven't already. Follow up with different issues. Issues coming out every Tuesday and Friday. Student written, student operated. The Pen, IEP's number one newspaper. And don't forget to check out thepen.org for exclusive features that haven't been shown in the fiscal form of The Pen. I'm Jake Slobodnik alongside Stephen Langdon Jr. and Jeff Hart, and we will see you on the next episode of The Crimson Conversion. Take care, everyone. This 
has been a production of the Penn Sports Network.